All right, folks. So in this video, we're going to take a look at what are called data points or sweep points uh, when you configure your nano VNA to do a frequency sweep of a device. In our case, we are going to sweep my 40 meter NFED half wave antenna that I use for amateur ham radio. Before we get started, I did want to say that I was sent this device by R-Sync free of charge in exchange for this video evaluation. Now I want to point out that this Nano VNA is different than other Nano VNAs in that it uses N-type connectors as opposed to SMA connectors, something that you would typically see on Nano VNAs like this Nano VNA H4. Here are SMA connectors. Now in this demonstration, we are going to calibrate this using the supplied reference standards for calibrations. Now typically when you calibrate a nano VNA, this becomes your reference plane. So anything measured is beyond the point of this connector. Because we're going to connect this to a long coaxial cable that runs out to my backyard antenna, we are going to use this supplied jumper to give us a little bit of flexibility and strain relief. So we are going to connect this to the device and then we're going to use this barrel connector connected to the end of this jumper cable. Once we do that, our ground plane or reference plane, I should say, has been extended from this point to this point, And that is where we'll connect our reference leads. And we're going to cover all of that. Now, we're going to talk about sweep points and why they're important. When you take a measurement over a span of frequency, your measuring device will check at various intervals. Those intervals are defined by the number of data points that you have. The bigger the frequency span that you're going to cover, the further those data points are from each other. And that may or may not be a big deal. Now, I've got an established antenna and I know how it performs, so it's probably not as big of a deal for me. But if you were building or tuning an antenna for the first time, it could be a pretty big deal. And that's what we're going to look at today. Okay, so I almost forgot. We are using the supplied USB cable to go into the USB port on our Nano VNA. And the reason we're doing this is that we're connecting it to our computer and we're going to use a software program called Nano VNA Saver. The reason we're doing that is a little bit easier to see the charts and graphs in Nano VNA Saver than it is through my camera on this device. The other thing is, is that the application is a little bit more flexible and will allow us to substantially increase our data points or sweep points. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here you can see we're running Nano VNA Saver. This is version 0.3.8. The first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we are connected to our Nano VNA. So down here in the lower left hand corner, you'll see options for serial port control. Here it's auto detected my Nano VNA on COM3, the SAA2. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to click this button, connect to device. Now that we're connected to the device, you get some, my screen over here is getting populated. This is a chart for S11 VSWR or measuring your SWR or your return loss. One thing I wanted to do is go back to this display and you can see that our Nano VNA has now says S. AAN2 USB mode, so I can't see anything on the device display at this time. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and I want to configure my sweep. And as mentioned, my NFED half wave is for 40 meters, so we're going to sweep from 6.5 megahertz, and we're going to stop at 30 megahertz. Now, the reason we're doing this is we want to get a little bit of spectrum on our chart from before the 7 uh, megahertz or, or 40 meter band and a little bit after the 10 meter band. So when you take a look below this, you see something that says segments one. And what this does is it takes our 101 data points, which is the stock standard configuration for the Nano VNA, and it distributes them across our span. Now here you can see our span is 23.5 megahertz, which means that we're going to have a data point every 235 kilohertz. Now, there's a couple of things to consider here. The 40 meter band is 300 kilohertz wide. So we're only going to get one data point in that band, right? And that's not exactly the best thing for us. And that's why we're a little bit concerned. 
So the first thing that we want to do now is we want to come down and we want to hit this calibration button and I get this calibration window. And what you can see right now is that our active calibration, calibration device calibration source, Nano VNA is uncalibrated. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to calibrate this. There are two different types of calibrations. You can do a single or a dual port calibration. For this demonstration, we are just going to do a single port calibration and we're going to use this calibration assistant. So I click that button and I get a pop up that says this will help you create a calibration in the Nano VNA Saver application. It will sweep the standards for you and guide you through the process. If you want a two port calibration, we also have a through connector, have the through connector at hand. So I am ready to proceed and I'm going to press OK. And what it's asking me to do is connect the short standard to port zero of the Nano VNA. Let's go ahead and set that up now. So as mentioned before, you can see my camera right here. We are going to use this jumper to extend our reference plane. So I have that connected up. And what it asked me to do is to go ahead and connect the short. Now, because these standards are a little bit bigger than the typical Nano VNA, it makes it really easy to determine which one's which. So let's go ahead and apply the short standard. Now we're gonna go back to the application and we're gonna click OK to continue. So now it's telling us to please connect the open standard to the zero port of the Nano VNA. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So I remove the short, I put it over here so I don't get it mixed up with anything, and I take the open standard and I click OK. Now it's asking me to connect the load standard to port zero of the Nano VNA. Press OK when you're ready to continue. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's our load. And this is just a 50 ohm dummy load, for lack of a better word. Okay, so that's on there. And now I'm going to hit OK to continue. It says the required steps for a one point one port calibration are now complete. If you wish to continue performing two port calibration, press yes to apply the one port calibration and stop press apply. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit apply. And what I want to do now is I'm going to close this window. But before I do, I want to note here, it's telling us that our calibration is applied at 101 points. And then you can see here, short is set to 100, open is set to 100, and load is set to 100. Let's go ahead and close this out. So what we want to do now is we want to configure our markers real quick. When you take a look at our SWR chart, you will see a blue bar. Each one of these blue bars is shading or highlighting of a particular band along the amateur radio spectrum. This first one is for the 40 meter band or 7 megahertz. So we want to set a marker in the middle of this band. So over here on the left hand side, I'm going to say, let's put one at 7.150. And that is right in the middle of the 40 meter band. Marker two, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do this for the 20 meter band. So we would set this for 14.175. Now, if you take a look, it has adjusted these. The first one has auto adjusted to 7.205, the second one for 14.255. The reason being is, is that if you look down here, each one of our data points is represented by a dark spot on that line. There is not one for the frequencies that we want, so it picks the closest, which further illustrates my point about the number of points, uh, sweep points in your configuration. Marker three, we are gonna set this for the 15 meter band, and we're gonna set it for 21,225. And then marker number four, we're going to do in the 10 meter band at 28,850. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now we're going to tech, uh, attach our antenna and perform the sweep. Okay, so now we're going to connect our antenna to the Nano VNA. And it doesn't reach all the way over here. This is as far as I can get it. 
One thing I wanted to talk about is antennas build up static and you can get static discharge when connecting your antenna to a radio or device like an NOVNA. So what you want to do is you want to take something with an insulated handle and you just want to short this out between the center conductor and the shield or this outer connector piece. And what we've done is we've discharged any static buildup that is on our antenna that could damage our device. Let's go ahead and connect it. Okay, now we're going to go back to the software interface. Okay, now that we're in our software interface, we are going to go ahead and we are going to run our sweep. So up here in the upper left hand box, you have sweep control and there is a button labeled sweep. Let's go ahead and click that now. And you can see that the sweep ran. Each one of these dots represents one of our sweep points or data points. By looking at this, what you can see is that I have a reasonably well-tuned and fed half wave. Here we're a little bit off on 40 meters, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to recalibrate at a higher sweep setting and run this sweep again. First, I want to adjust my SWR chart. I'm going to adjust the maximum on my data access to 10. And the reason I do this is it makes it a little bit easier to read this chart. One thing I want to note is that our first marker, what we can see is, is it says it's a VSWR of 2.138 to 1. Here at uh, 20 meters, it is 1.655 to 1. At 3, we have 1.031 to 1. And then over here at 4, we have 2.387. Let's go ahead and make the adjustments to our sweep, increase our points, and see what happens next. Now what I want to do is I'm going to come up here to our sweep control, and I'm going to change our segments from 1 to 25. And when I do that, you can see that now I have 9.311 kilohertz per step, as opposed to the 235 kilohertz. And this is going to give us a much more granular reference. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this as my current reference. And then when we do our next sweep, it will overlay on top of this, this reading. Okay, so after running the calibration, you can see here, my short is set at 2,525 points, as all of the other calibrations. And that is significantly higher than what we had before at 101 points. So what I've done is readjusted my markers. And what you can see here is they are much closer to what we originally intended. Now, when you increase these segments, what it does is it takes your frequency defined as your start and stop in your sweep control. And you've uh, broken that down into 25 segments. Each one of those segments will be scanned with 101 data points, thus giving us our 2525 across the entire span that we are sweeping. Because we increase the segments, the sweep will take significantly longer to run, 25 times as long to be exact. Let's go ahead and click the sweep button and see what we get. Okay, now that the sweep is done, let's take a look at our results. And what you can see is, is that because we have a more granular scan, our lines are a little less rigid, a little less choppy, and they're also more accurate. And our antenna actually looks like it's performing better than it did before. For example, our VSWR on our first marker is down by a little bit more than half of a point. Last time it was 2.1, now it's 1.4. Marker 2 last time was 1.6, now it's 1.1. 1 
marker three actually went up a little bit. It was 1.0, now it's 1.81. And then our marker four, which was 1.5, is now 1.3. So I have a little bit of a better idea as to how my antenna would perform. Again, in an antenna that has already been tuned or adjusted, it's not as big of a difference or a big of a deal. But if I had put up a brand new antenna where I would have to either add length or reduce length, this difference in measurement could be quite significant. Anyhow, if you have any questions, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it.